welcome back to the show. If you just tuned in, thanks so much for joining us. So in this country, we really are blessed with good amounts of sunshine, great weather. But despite the sun being freely available to everyone, you'll be amazed just to know how many people are vitamin D deficient. So how much time do we need to be spending in the sun to get enough vitamin D? Should we actually be supplementing it? Uh, that's the question we'll be asking or answering for you today. Rory Jean-Jacques is here to give us some insight on this topic. Um, in fact, I found out that they're also quite vitamin D deficient in the Middle East, which, you know, one of the hottest parts of the world as well. <laughs> Can Why? You believe it? So much sun and so little vitamin D. I know, D I know. Because we spend all our time indoors. It's true. In air conditioned. We, we, we and, and lots of SPF. We're lots, always putting on sunblock. Lots, lots yeah. of SPF. So yeah. that does play a factor. Mm. Um, but, you know, sunny South Africa, 85% of people have suboptimal vitamin D levels. Yeah. And what our skin does is it uses cholesterol to produce vitamin D. See, so when people say cholesterol is bad, I always want to say, no, no you need it. Not. You need you it to need make it. vitamin D, you need yes. it to make hormones. Yeah. So if your cholesterol is too low, then it affects your hormonal status. Every single cell in your body has a receptor for vitamin D. Wow. Most people think vitamin D, oh, gives you strong bones, mm. Mm. but it's involved. They In immunity. They, they, yeah. Immunity, insulin resistance, yeah. cancer prevention, yeah. heart disease, yeah. mood changes. Um, you People that have very, very low vitamin D status tend to get sick regularly. Mm. They have low moods. Depression. They, they, yeah. they, they can't sleep properly at night. It happens very, very much in the northern hemispheres. Yeah, you see posters so, everywhere in Europe for yes. vitamin D supplements, Yes, get vitamin right? D. They actually fortify dairy yes. um, to a large extent yes. vitamin D over there so people can get enough. Mm. Um, you have over 30,000 genes in your body. Vitamin D is involved in 3,000 of those. Wow in terms of improving gene expression. Wow. So your, your, your ability to um, regulate certain mm. health issues mm. is driven by vitamin D. And over the last sort of 15 years, it's really come into vogue mm. um, for chronic disorders, um, for uh, cancer prevention. Up to 60% um, um, of cancers can be um, uh, prevented well, using optimal levels of vitamin, of vitamin D. D. And it's very, very easy to test on, on, on a blood test. In fact, when you, let's talk about blood tests mm. because the norms have been um, difficult, right? Because um, your conventional medicine um, results will be, okay, that's okay. But, you know, if you go to a naturopathic doctor or a natural practitioner, they'll be like, oh, no, maybe so, it's so, not optimal. So, so. so, so they talk about um, sort of, deficiency levels when you're really, really deficient. Yeah. That's not optimal. For yeah. Optimal expression of health and immunity and prevention of disease. So when they do blood tests, they talk about 10 to 20 um, nanograms mm. per mil. Mm. Um, but optimal levels, they start looking at 50 to 80, mm. and for certain treatments of disease, 100, 100 yeah. nanograms per mil. Okay. And, and those are the optimal levels. And normally in, in, in traditional allopathic medicine, they will give you something called vitamin D2. Yes. Ergo calciferol. And that is an, a synthetic form. It's not body identical. Uh, it can create toxicities in your liver. Your kidneys have to convert it actively. Because so, it's absorbed with, uh, or it's fat absorbable. So, so, yeah. so yes, it is a fat soluble vitamin. Mm. So any type of um, um, uh, fat soluble vitamins like mm. vitamin K, vitamin E, vitamin D, vitamin A, good to take with a fatty meal. So vitamin D, if you are taking it orally, try and take it with an oily meal because mm. that acts as a carrier for mm. absorption. So it is a fat-soluble vitamin. So mm. people that are quite obese have quite low status because they don't have enough circulating mm. levels of, of, vitamin. of vitamin D. People on anticonvulsant medicines, um, it interferes with the con conversion and utilization of vitamin D. Uh, people with uh, Crohn's disease and gastric inflammation, which a lot of people have yeah. because of issues with casein and mm. wheat and things like that. Mm. Um, and uh, even the, the elderly have an issue with that because their kidneys don't convert it actively. Mm. And a lot of infants can have low because it depends on the, 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 the mom's vitamin D. Yes, status. yes. Yeah. And it's so involved. I've watched young kids with small amounts of vitamin D, how it completely changes their cognitive function yeah. and their immunity yeah. and, and things like that. Yeah. So, yeah. so there's D2 and D3, and the yes. D2 is, is the synthetic form that Correct. you're talking about. Correct. Okay. Um, vitamin D3 is the, the body-ready form. It's the optimal form. It's, it's absorbed, utilized, uh, retained way better than the synthetic form. All the research studies are saying vitamin D3 is the one to use. And there are other forms of delivery mechanisms like uh, applying on the skin and various forms of patches. And 
one of the most important sunlight. Yes. 20 to 30 minutes a day of whole body sunlight. Yeah, with nothing um, on. With nothing yeah, on, yeah. just get, and. and, That's, and that could mean naked as well. It might be good to absolutely, just <laughs> absolutely. go and ground in the grass and, and be free in your garden. I mean, like like Superman recharges himself <laughs> in the sun, exactly. we've got to recharge our vitamin D levels. <laughs> no, exactly. I've, I've heard that the more um, melanin you have in your, yes. your skin, you need longer amounts. So you're on that 30, 20, you know, mark or so a little bit more, more. And, and, okay. then, and then possibly supplementation okay. as well. Okay. Um, people why, why is that? Just explain to people. So, why so a lot of people sometimes will actually have an issue with their skin converting the vitamin D into the active form and you need certain types of nutrients. So they might have nutrient status issues. Okay. You don't get the proper conversion. So, so, so doing it on, on sunlight is probably the best because mm. your body can produce such a huge amount and it will produce the amounts that are to balance. You know, supplementation is if your levels are very, very low, and it takes time to build your levels. It does, yeah. So, so, so it's one of the, the 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 best nutrients that you can take to prevent probably most of our chronic illnesses yes. is a simple vitamin D. But something that concerns me is how much vitamin D people take on a daily basis, but they do not balance it with vitamin K2. Two, yes. Yeah. So if you're taking high amounts of vitamin D, your your body's ability to absorb calcium goes through the roof. So you have very high amounts of circulating calcium. Mm. If you don't have vitamin K2, your body can't take it and put it in the bones. Mm. Where does it go? So it can't Calci deposit it where it needs exactly. it. Exactly. So it calcifies the arteries, creates kidney stones, ah. creates a whole range of issues with calcification, which is what you don't want. And yeah. A lot of people go for injections when they're very ill. They've got viral infections because mm. vitamin D is so involved in your immunity. immunity this yeah. is why we get so sick in mm. winter, mm. not getting enough vitamin D, and why we get so depressed in, in, winter, in winter and how it affects our moods because yeah. it's so involved in so many different things. Yeah. Even insulin regulation, sugar regulation, mm, mm. Um, hormonal status. Mm. So your, your, your libido and how yes, your hormones yes, function, it's yeah. so heavily involved in that. Yeah. Um, so, so when people get those injections, it com com completely shut down their thyroid. So, so synergy is very, very important. important. And people take these high doses and then, you know, much later on and they do it for years and they mm. develop issues with calcification. What is vitamin D doing when it comes to skin health and skin function as well? So, so vitamin D is so heavily involved in in the, the health of how our cells function mm. and um, you know and regulating that regulating okay. the actual actual function of the skin you don't want to get too too much sun because mm. you know the risk of various factors and stuff like that and cancer to, and yeah. cancers and but mm. 20 to 30 days they even did research that even if you're using SPF your blood levels still go up Oh, okay. So, okay. so I've, I've studied that research very intensely, yeah, and I because... still found that there was very significant changes. So we're okay. always worrying that we're putting SPF on and it's affecting us. Mm. It's actually a lot of the chemicals that they put in the SPF that reacts with the sun and the heat that is actually more carcinogenic. Oh, okay. Than, that, the actual, yeah. than, than the actual UVA rays. That makes that makes sense to yeah. me. So, the Real Health team tried vitamin D3 transdermal patches. I mentioned that you can take it in liquid form, capsule form, but there's also transdermal patches. And we've added them to the Real Health Medicine Cabinet. And uh, Rory, just tell us why these patches are so effective. So, I mean, your, your skin produces vitamin D. It's what your body does. So, so it makes sense I, I mean, to put it on your skin, right? And originally, <laughs> when they did the research, they actually made like an ointment. And they put it on and they found that the body absorbed it quite intensely. Okay. So I thought, well, you know, because it's such a small molecule and because it's skin skin readily available and absorbable, mm -hmm. could they put it in the patch? Yeah. And I've had people that have major gastric issues or cancer patients that are, you know, um, cancer of the colon and stuff that can't absorb any of their nutrients had great improvements in their vitamin D status using the patch. Okay. You know, um, and so, the patch versus sublingual in the mouth. So, so, what's your... so if I'm treating a very intense um, um, deficiency, I, I like to do a combination of both. Both. Okay. So you could do the drops. Mm. Um, you can just take a tablet, mm. vitamin D3. They're vegan form of D3 as well as there's a synthetic one produced from um, lamb's wool called from lanolin. Okay. okay lamb's oh yes, I've seen lanolin. that. Yeah, yeah. So so and those are the most most of the forms. Um, and it's good if you could get it mixed with some type of oil like an MCT oil or okay. something like okay. that. So I like to do a combination of both, and I like to see some people struggle to tolerate it orally, okay, because they might have liver challenges, so mm. they don't feel so well in it mm. and some people with certain issues like um, certain Lyme's disease and stuff like mm. that it turns vitamin D to a very top, toxic substance mm. um, so oral, oral can be quite a challenge the, the, the advantages of transdermal is it go it, it bypasses the liver first phase metabolism so it goes straight into the bloodstream you get slow release um, this patch is mixed with vitamin K2 okay. in the right ratio Amazing. So, so that's that's a really really good combination over there it um, is um K2, MK2. 
Yes, a men men menequin K2. Okay, a particular okay. form, uh, the optimal body ready and absorbable form of it. And you've got some magnesium in here as well. Little bit of magnesium. It's more just a, a, a token amount. Okay, yes. and one patch contains five thousand IU. Five thousand IU. So this is quite. A, is this a therapeutic dose? That or? is definitely a therapeutic okay. dose. Um, if you could do, you could do one a day for a period of time because the absorbability is so good. You can watch improvements mm. uh, in your blood and people. I've had a lot of good feedback. I've, I've seen a lot of good feedback in my practice. Okay. You know, with how people feel on it. So it's a really good way to administer your vitamin D because yeah. there's many ways to do it. Yeah. And if you can combine the oral, you get the best of both worlds because sometimes it's very difficult to get your levels to that sort of 70 to 100 um, uh, nanograms. Level, yeah. That, that yeah. optimal, optimal level, which is the optimal for health and mood and, and all of those types yeah. of things. So it's got 16 patches, which is one month supply. Why is that? So one every second day. Every second day. Yeah. And is there anyone that shouldn't be taking it on uh, contraindications here? So, so uh, no real major contraindications. Okay. Um, pe people with uh, very, very high calcium levels or parathyroid uh, challenges, I, I would be, be careful using that. People with various kidney disorders, mm. that's something that they need to be aware of. Mm. Um, it has great benefits in various autoimmune disorders and things like that mm. because it helps the immune system to communicate. Modulate so, it, yeah. So it modulates the immune system. Okay. So, so those would be the main ones. To okay. Get. And where can people get it? So it's it's available at health shops and pharmacies all over the country. Mm. It's available on neogenhealth.com and on scentedsecrets.co.za. Fantastic. Thanks so much for coming to oh, chat to pleasure. us.